Hey guys, Greg here on the Vinyl Rundown. A couple records to show you, four or five records to show you that I got in the last couple days. And there's a sad story about how and why I acquired them. And uh, let's move the camera. There we go. So uh, let's see, where do I begin with this story? So I was in uh, Ventura, California uh, Sunday night. And uh, we had dinner reservations at a restaurant at 5 o'clock. That's when old people eat, kind of early. And uh, But there was a record store a block away. And I knew they closed at 5. So I said, let's get there a little early. And I'll spend a few minutes in the record store. And then we'll pop over for dinner. Well, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that picture? What's wrong with it is I'm forcing myself to do shopping in a 15-minute period. That's always a bad idea. I've done that before. I usually regret it. So I get in there and I'm like, yeah, I can get through this whole store in 15 minutes. Well, really what I'm gonna do is get through the whole jazz section in 15 minutes and then look look at a few other things. But when you're doing that, the problem is you're going really fast. You're not looking at the condition of the records carefully. You're not spending the time to look them up on Discogs and see if you already have it. You're not taking the time to look it up on eBay to see if what the right price is. Is it a rare record? Is it a good record? So I had like seven or eight things. Went it down to the four that I'm going to show you. <clears throat> and keep in mind, I had to be, I was supposed to be at dinner at five. Tiny little store. It only holds like three people. Well, two people got right in front of me and they spent $150 and it took forever to check out. And a very nice lady who works over, she's writing down every record longhand on a piece of paper. I'm, I was a little aggravated. All good though. I got some good stuff. But had I spent more time, I might have bought more, I might have bought less. Who knows? So let's see. The first record I'm going to show you is not a record at all. This is a very bizarre thing to be showing you. I found this in the free pile of another record store a couple weeks ago, Shirley Scott. I don't know that much about Shirley Scott. I know she's a jazz organist, but I threw this in the CD player in the car. Been listening to it for weeks. It's pretty nice. Shirley Scott was a, probably one of the most famous jazz organists of the 60s, and she was married to Stanley Torrentine for a while. So when I was at this record store in Ventura, I found a couple of Shirley Scott records, and I bought this one. This one's on Impulse. A lot of ring wear, big ugly sticker on it. Shirley Scott, Great Scott, organi uh, orchestrated by Oliver Nelson, the great Oliver Nelson. You guys know him from uh, Stolen Moments, I think. There's Oliver Nelson. And uh, what else do we got to say about this record? So, side one is very kind of uh, big bandy. I actually like side two better, it's more combo ish. The big band doesn't feature her organ as much as uh, side two, I think. Yeah, okay. They actually list the different musicians. So side two is is a uh, trio. Shirley Scott, Bob Cranshaw on bass, and Otis Finch on drums. And then she sings a little bit. So I like side two better than side one. Even though I love Oliver Nelson, I really bought this to hear Shirley Scott, not Oliver Nelson. Impulse, only eight bucks. Good condition, the, the cover's thrashed, but it's in good condition. Sounds sounds fine. What else did we get? <clears throat> How about a two record set? Verve. Jazz at the Philharmonic series. And this has like half the great bebop players out there on it. It's got Dizzy Gillespie, Charlie Parker, uh, Lester Young, Coleman Hawkins. I think Buddy Rich plays on here. Uh, a couple other people. So Jazz at the Philharmonic was, was a series of live concerts that Norman Grants put together in the 40s. So all this stuff came out in the 40s on 78 RPM. And it was all in Los Angeles, not New York. <clears throat> but a uh, pretty famous set of sessions, Jazz at the Philharmonic. I think you can get the um, 78 RPM series. It's kind of collectible. But... Uh, Good stuff. These are, these are like Verve reissues. Okay, what's with this? How do you get ring wear on the inside cover on a small ring? You usually see ring wear on the outer ring. 
I've never seen such intense ring wear. Of the inner ring. What's up with that, guys? I don't know what to tell you. But uh, these are in fine shape. Original Verve label. This came out, this was a re-release in 1977. So this record was actually, these tunes were recorded in the 40s, 46, 47. Came out on LP 30 years later. I bought it, is that 30 years or 40 years? It's a long time ago. Long time ago. Bebop. I must be getting old. <clears throat> I am. How about the CTI label? Which I've talked about once in a while. CTI, that's Creed Taylor's uh, label. And he did these sort of slick studio, you know, very slick recordings of lots of jazz people. George Benson, I didn't really know this record, Body Talk, but Price was right. I was in a hurry. And look how skinny George was back then. <clears throat> Early 70s, probably. Uh, but look who plays on here. Guitar player Earl Clue, along with George Benson, Ron Carter, Jack DeJeanette, one of my all-time favorite drummers, John Faddis on trumpet. Recorded in 1973, Rudy Van Gelder. This album is also available on stereo cassette, stereo and quad reel-to-reel, -reel, stereo and quad 8-track. They made a lot of versions of this record. That's, I don't think that's even that well known. Okay, coming down to the end here. A couple more things to show you guys. <clears throat> Miles Davis' first record on Columbia after he left Prestige in the mid-50s. Round, sometimes they call it Round About Midnight. We just call it Round Midnight. The famous Thelonious Monk song. Uh, this has, of course, got some eyes on it. That would be six of the Columbia eyes. Who plays on here? This is the classic Miles uh, Quintet. John Coltrane on sax. Red Garland on piano. Philly Joe on drums. Paul Chamber on bass. Uh, is this an original? It says 1956 on the bottom. I have no reason to believe that it's not original. But uh, it does say, be careful. It might skip a little bit. It was only six bucks. I assume this is a $20 record, and if I can get it for 6 bucks, I can live with one skip. But we'll see. The jury's out. So that's one of the problems when I buy cheap records, is I go for cheap instead of quality, and I end up coming home with a bunch of records of um, questionable quality. There's some good stuff here. I listen, to, uh, I listen to most of it. I listen to Shirley Scott a number of times. Oops. I listen to the... Uh, Jazz at the Philharmonic, all the way through. Sounds sounds nice. Bird and Prez. You know Prez is Lester Young, right? Did I already explain that? Hold on, I dropped something. Oh. <clears throat> dropped the CD. Uh, a couple other things to show, guys. Here's a record we just got in the mail. It's my wife's, White Reaper. Have you heard of them? I haven't. There's some kids from Kentucky, and they're the latest uh, pop craze. They've been compared to... Beach Boys meets Tom Petty meets Cheap Trick, I think is how she described it. Pop music, which my wife loves. You got this weird, ugly sticker that uh, Electra put on here. What's up with that? Do you guys have any idea why I'm looking at this ugly sticker? White Reaper. Sounds like a heavy metal band, but it's not. Grim Reaper, White Snake. But, uh, okay, what else? There's more. There's more to show you guys. Why do I always show you this? The new stereo file is out, and I'm going to talk about records, not about stereo equipment. Forty years ago today, what happened, guys? The Clash. Nice article on the 40th anniversary of London Calling, one of the most seminal band, seminal albums of the punk period. After last week, I did a, a whole video kind of trashing the new wave movement. Well. I didn't really talk about bands as cool as The Clash, but London Calling, definitely one of the greats of the olden days. And then, <clears throat> guess what the record of the month is? 40 years ago? How about 50 years ago? Record of the, of the month with uh, Stereophile is the 3 LP anniversary edition of Abbey Road, 50 years old. Good, uh, I read this, good description of the record. Um, 
mixed from the original 8-track master tapes, not the digital files. And it was remixed a little bit. Uh, Giles Martin attempted to um, bring out the individuality of the different band members. So you, you're going to hear some sort of different mix stuff on here. Uh, sound quality is supposed to be very good on this. Uh, what else was I going to tell you about here? Do, 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 do. Well, it's a three record set. I haven't heard it. I don't have it. Some of you on the VC do. Um, anyway, go get the magazine and read it yourself. I'm not going to read you the whole thing. It lists seven facts about the record. The last one, number seven, is you need this record. Eh, maybe I'll get it. We'll see. Abbey Road's one of my favorite records of all time, but I have like three copies of it on LP and one or two on CD. And on the inside, there's another Abbey Road review that is of the um, multi-channel and Atmos mix. So if you have one of these home theaters with five or seven channels, you can get this version. Not into that. Maybe some of you guys are. Uh, okay. I think that covers it. This has been a special midweek edition. Did I mention the shirt? Did I mention I'm wearing the world's only... Oh, that's Shirley Scott on, on uh, organ right there, by the way. I forgot to tell you. We're listening to a Shirley Scott organ on co in concert. Not a record, but a concert. Final Rundown t-shirt, only one in existence my wife got for me last Christmas. I wear it occasionally on special occasions. Uh, I think that is it, guys. So thanks for watching, and uh, we will check you guys later. Bye-bye.